Over to you, Nitin, for your case study. Yeah, thank you very much, Henry. Um, excited to get the ball rolling. So uh, for, for this case study, I'm, I'm excited to talk about Health Patron, the product that I worked on over the course of um, uh, this program. It, it's a healthcare selection product uh, that uh, was built out pretty much from scratch. And uh, I, I'm just excited to present the findings. Um, Starting off with just my personal principles when it comes to product management. Um, this is a, influenced in part by my background as a consultant prior to when I was in product. Um, I, I always enjoy the idea as a product manager of placing oneself at the crossroads. Uh, philosophically speaking, just being in the mix between different stakeholders, both internally within a company as well as externally with different customer groups. Uh, I've always been a Kung Fu flick fan, um, a, a Bruce Lee fan. Uh, so I, I really enjoy the quote personally of being formless like water and how that relates to product um, about how if a cup or a container is uh, translates to demand, at least within my mind, uh, the product should be water. It should be uh, developed to best fit that demand, to best fit the problems of the time um, and to adapt accordingly, depending on the container and depending on uh, those factors. Um, when building hypotheses, I always want to focus on the psychology over just a, a, a technical solution, at least when I map it out in my head. Uh, this will come into play when I speak more about health patron and how I wanted to develop it. Um, the fourth is really just how I've lived my life and career. I, I, I enjoy challenges. I enjoy new environments. Uh, I enjoy the idea of being able to put myself in proverbial fire. Um, and then finally, just as a summation, solutions should be able to address emotion. Um, health patron in particular came out of talking to customers about different pain points and frustrations, and I wanted to be able to address that directly. Uh, so in terms of my process for health patron, and I'm just going to move uh, some screens over to the side here, um, I wanted to focus on what I believed was a pretty large problem within the United States that people were frustrated about having to select healthcare on an annual basis. Um, just going through the process of uh, reviewing their options, trying to understand terminology, being caught up in that kind of language, and how it would lead to anxiety and stress. Uh, so I wanted to initially approach that and interview customers about that. From there, uh, I went into validating the minimum viable offer uh, and trying to progress per the feedback I received um, before going into uh, a no-code solution that built itself around reducing anxiety. And then I'm at the process now in terms of learning and investing long-term and refining that prototype, building it off of that feedback, um, whether it's relatively smaller changes like feature changes and color schemes or larger changes like different components that I want to put into the prototype to add to the user experience. Also, before I go on, please let me know if there are questions at any point during this. So my initial problem statement um, was focused on American employees. I say this because I'm a US citizen and I'm familiar enough just from personal experience of my anxiety when going through the healthcare selection process. So I wanted to stick with that first and then see if there were any changes. Um, just in terms of their frustrations and navigating their options and their ideal situation was frankly to not have as much stress about it. My hypothesis was that this was a, an acute problem. This was a serious problem for um, my niche audience. So I went about reaching out to over 100 people within my network and was able to land 22 user interviews, each 30 minute stretches where I was able to interview them, ask them about their experiences with healthcare, ask them about the stresses they had in terms of choosing between different plans, um, things that they would like to see as well. I, I think a question I really appreciated being able to ask was being able to um, see what they would, what they would like to see as a solution. Now, for each of the 22, the answer was different, but I was able to see a consistent through line with them where they were looking for a product that reduced anxiety, 
that was able to explain terminology to them, that was able to break down a lot of the complications with healthcare in the US into manageable chunks. This next slide is a bit small, but I, I'll, I'll be able to speak to it. Um, I, I was able to map out with each of these interviewees their work experience, uh, their health, their pre-existing conditions, if they felt comfortable sharing it, and uh, their perceptions of their plans and how they signed up for them every time during the enrollment period, which happens at the first quarter of the year in the United States. Um, so the first two images here are really just a breakdown of the uh, interviewee's perspective, as well as different factors that I felt that they would like to see. Um, and that mapped out into the Blue Ocean Strategy Canvas, where I looked at three main competitors. And I say that in quotes because they fit there, there was no specific name for a competitor. No one was aware of anything on the market that could really help them in terms of explaining healthcare. But they talked about the three main places they went to in order to get advice. They either uh, Googled or spoke with their family members, and, or they went to their coworkers or uh, spoke to HR within their company, or they struggled to navigate insurance provider websites. Um, there were a few positives when going through this. Uh, they were able to, at times, get definitions of healthcare plans, but there was really nothing there that went to what I wanted to try to build. So as you can see, in terms of the, uh, the blue line, um, this was like, I, I believe that I could build a product that focused more on personalization, customization, and then anxiety reduction. Move my mouse out of the way, but uh, with the, the second hypothesis, I wanted to focus on building just a straightforward landing page, and I wanted to focus on building a survey, which I ended up doing on Typeform, um, which ended up having a um, pretty healthy conversion rate um, in terms of, or completion rate rather. I was able to get 44 responses and uh, really j just to glean more data in terms of uh, interest, just to see what was out there. Um, people were incredibly passionate about this topic. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. You, so you reached out to 125 people and you, sorry, you got 125 people. 125 views, but 76 starts. On oh, yeah, yeah, so the completion rate, 57, very, very high. Great. Yeah, so, and uh, it, one thing I, I, I forgot to mention in terms of the 22 calls, um, this did translate in part to the survey. People were passionate about this topic to the point of, uh, I would start an interview. They would be calm, they would be polite, they'd be excited to get started, and they would be furious by the end of the call. Not at me, but about this issue. <laughs> a lot of times, um, a, a, a few people used uh, some very colorful language when talking about uh, just their pain and their struggle going through this. But um, I, I guess as a sum of that, I mean, I spoke to people who were well into their career, about eight to 10 years, and they would say year over year, I have no clue of what's going on in terms of how to go about picking my healthcare, what questions I should be asking, I'm just at a loss. And so, yeah, I, I, this, is, this is around the time in the course, uh, I mean, I, I felt pretty heartened by just what I was getting in terms of data. And the next step was really just to build towards a viable product. Uh, in terms of the images here, on the left is the type form survey. And uh, I think the one thing I'd really say here is from this point forward, I really wanted to focus on every aspect in terms of building the product to be something that reduced stress, even if it was something minor like the design of the type form survey. I, I just wanted something calming because frankly, with those interview calls, I figured people would be upset regardless. And then in terms of the right side, the landing page, uh, I, I know Henry, you and I talked about this at one point. Uh, I was using a little bit of vague marketing speak at the time, but I wanted to tweak it a bit uh, to focus on the fact that um, if people were stressed out about their healthcare, which I felt close to supremely confident in stating after the interviews that I had, um, how could I market it to them? What would be the pitch to them? 
And then in terms of the validated product vision, um, in terms of the quote, we, we, I know Henry, you and I talked about a web app or a platform that provides guidance to users. Um, asking them questions, really personal but simple questions that can ultimately match them to their ideal plan for that year and then provide reasoning subsequently about why that plan was good for them. Um, I included uh, one of my more colorful interviewees, Justin Miller, uh, and his perspective, um, which I, I spoke to just a, a little while earlier, um, being anxious every year when signing up for healthcare, having a desired situation of being able to walk through the process and a product vision that would facilitate that. Uh, in terms of the third hypothesis, I wanted to focus on building a customer journey map, which I ended up doing with Miro, um, and a no-code prototype with Figma that really matched to the survey responses and the interviews. And then here, on the top left was uh, the customer journey map, which step-by-step step walked through uh, just that process of customers going in. I believe the customer name I had for this was Bob. <laughs> Bob going in and uh, being wanting to choose healthcare, his ideal healthcare plan, being nervous about it, just walking through different questions, getting a plan result at the end, and uh, ultimately being happy with the service. Uh, on the top right were my initial wireframes, which I put in a mobile format for the sole purpose really of reducing fluff. Um, I wanted to break it down to its simplest form and to build off of that. Um, on the bottom left is the, uh, the Figma prototype where I, and this is something I've talked with respondents about, um, built out of just a very bright, friendly color scheme and uh, moved forward with questions. Um, I was very influenced by TurboTax within the United States, which was uh, similar in its interface. TurboTax is a product that uh, Americans use in terms of filing their taxes year over year. Um, it is a bit more comprehensive than health patron looks now, but uh, essentially it's able to take tax documentation, incorporate it in, ask straightforward questions, and output how much of a refund uh, American employees get year over year. Um, I wanted to follow a similar sort of structure, even going down to just the header of the interface. And then with the, the fourth hypothesis, <clears throat> uh, the fourth hypothesis, I wanted to build out a no-code application using Bubble, and I wanted to recruit five to 10 beta testers to really go through this with me and to share their perspective. And I'm in the process of working through a product market fit, but I, I was able to get nine user tests prior to this call um, and was able to uh, got, uh, share the prototype with them and have them walk through the process with me. So on the left here is the follow-up survey, survey I have following the prototype. And the two screenshots I wanted to share, one, the intro screen just to show a bit of the progression from um, Figma and then the plan output page, which I would say was the most popular page um, out of the ones that they saw. Um, essentially, they were able to walk through the questions, get a plan result, and this page explained based on their answers why they received that result. So it was able to provide a bit more um, detail, a bit more learning, it was able to reinforce the point as to why they got the result. Uh, they really appreciated that. Um, I, I think one of the things I took away from the beta testers, and one of the things that, that I want to explore moving forward is they wanted to reduce anxiety, they wanted to pick their healthcare plan, but they really wanted to learn more about their plan as well. They, they wanted to better understand it as opposed to having something that they pick, they get, and then they put it out of sight, out of mind, over the course of the year, unless they have an emergency. Um, so a, a couple of things that I wanted to continue to focus on, um, continuing to build out just a friendly, positive interface, continuing to build off of feedback and any constructive criticism, and speaking of that constructive criticism, continuing to make changes to questions. I think that was the most important element of this, um, making sure that questions were easy to understand, um, 
breaking them down into simple concepts and constantly reviewing that and making sure that each question served a particular purpose in order to match with that ideal plan. So in terms of the product market fit engine, this is, this is pretty much where I'm at right now. I, I was able to identify the target market. I was able to get a survey out and I have a solid beta testing group, um, a group that's passionate about working on this uh, particular product, um, is able to give pretty good feedback. Um, I want to add more to this group and I mean, I, I'll speak more in terms of jobs to be done um, about that aspect. But right now I'm in the process of segmenting, analyzing, and then in terms of implementing to for, for next steps, that's just a continuous process. Um, every time a tester is able to give me some feedback, I've been able to incorporate that, see which direction that I want to go, add accordingly. And then these are the two word clouds that I built out. First in terms of, and I know it might be small, but uh, in terms of the things that they like, uh, they enjoyed getting the plan result and the explanation. Um, most people enjoyed the interface. Uh, they weren't the biggest fan of the bold blue color, but that's a personal flaw. I know I like bright colors. So I've been trying to change that to a better hue just to uh, appeal to an audience. Um, uh, Stress-free navigation, it's, it's a very straightforward product in terms of being able to click to the next question, being able to get the plan um, result. There are details that I want to add in, in terms of a glossary page, in terms of um, increasing or improving responsiveness across the product, but the core of it is really a straight line. Um, in terms of things to improve, I spoke about this earlier. Um, there were issues with questions. Um, there were certain questions that tied into uh, healthcare premiums or how much money comes out of a paycheck each month. Uh, for healthcare, um, questions that were a bit too detailed, people were having some trouble with it. So it's my task as a product manager to really break that down and to further simplify that. Um, some people wanted to see uh, something quantifiable, numbers, like cost in terms of a healthcare plan um, in order to better respond. I'm a little bit hesitant about that because that would require um, information from insurance companies or employers in order to directly provide that, that would be a next step to look into. But for the purposes of the prototype, I wanted to keep it simple. And then in terms of jobs to be done, um, I, I want to, uh, well, I, I'll start off by saying that this has been a really wonderful experience in terms of going through the process of building this. So moving forward, I, I want to have a steady to-do list in terms of when to work on particular features, when to really uh, capitalize on tester recommendations. Um, I want to continue to assess the product market fit and the business model. I mentioned the business model because of what I described about getting insurance company data or trying to position itself as a, a partner with different stakeholder groups. I want to continue to assess that because I believe that there's a path forward with this. Um, again, the onus is on me in order to make sure that that happens. And then taking time each week just to reflect on progress. Um, I, I, as, as, uh, as much as I love being able to work on this as a product manager, I know I can definitely get in the weeds and just punch through and focus on particular things. Um, I do want to take some time just to think about how this has developed. Over the course of eight weeks, it's grown well beyond my wildest expectations. Um, so I want to continue to be mindful of that and to use that moving forward. In terms of next steps, this is a bit more, I guess, on the feature side. Um, I want to flesh out the bubble prototype. There are elements of it that I want to continue to work through, and I want to continue to test. Uh, so with these improved features, a glossary, a plan comparison page that uh, provides a bit more um, insight into different healthcare plans beyond what users were able to receive, um, changing the color scheme a little bit. And then I want to conduct a second beta test with a wider group of testers. And there are two main reasons for that. One, to get more results and feedback. Two, I mean, throughout this entire presentation, feedback, responsiveness, everything has been pretty positive. And I want to see if there are more people that could provide more pointed criticism. I don't want to go out seeking negativity for negativity's sake, but I personally enjoy when there is that kind of criticism because it helps me to understand and shape the path forward. So don't get me wrong, over the last eight weeks, it's been great in order to get that kind of feedback. 
but if I if I have to end up being a, a, a quasi devil's advocate for my own product, I'd like to in order to sharpen it. And then in terms of uh, just my background, uh, I'm a product manager with about eight years of full experience in my career in a myriad of different industries. I've worked in renewable energy, I've worked in e-commerce retail, I've worked in corporate finance jobs, and I have a background in growth strategy, uh, market research, as well as leadership. Uh, I, I've worked at both larger companies and larger consulting firms, as well as startups. And I'm currently working in education technology in the K-12 space in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, so I have a passion just for a number of different industries. I, I, I've enjoyed just about every job I've had. And this product that I've worked on within healthcare was in an entirely new industry as well. Um, I, I know I spoke with you a bit about this, Henry. Uh, it was simultaneously daunting initially, but very exciting to be able to go in and just be in a new space uh, and find my way around to build something that was viable. Awesome. awesome. And uh, with that, I'm set. Awesome. Really, really, really good. Um, I'm going to power through feedback on the case study and then talk about some sort of general feedback in the last eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, feel free to stop um, screen sharing. Oh, sure. All good. Um, excellent. Okay, so first thing, generally the case study, I think tone was uh, very good. And you have you have a really nice style as well, sort of interesting, and you're obviously curious about what you're presenting as well, which is comes across. Um, speed was good. I thought you and level of specificity as well, very good. I think you delved into topics where you needed. You stayed high level where you should have. On the principles, good. I love, I love you personalize these, right? The water analogy was great. I love the curiosity point. I think it's so important for leadership, but right? you're going, your product's difficult, right? You need to enjoy it and be curious. And oh, uh, I think you, your screen froze a little bit. Oh, sorry. I was saying, I think the curiosity point was great as well. Uh, oh, you're back. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I'm okay. maybe. Because you need to be- Yeah, uh, I can hear you now. Good, sorry, I think my internet froze for a second. I say curiosity was great, right? Because it's product's difficult. You need to be curious. On the process, um, one criticism, you mentioned the MVO, but you didn't go into, like, what is it? Right? Nobody knows what an MVO is. It's not really a known concept. But saying that the rest of it, you did get a good overview of the points. And obviously, you go into detail later. So I think it, it was fine. Um, on the problem, okay. it's crystal clear. And I think it was useful to mention that you suffered from this to give a bit of context. No. Sorry, I think you're, you're freezing in and out. Apologies. Uh, I'm going to turn off my video just to make sure that oh. the quality. Sorry, on the oh. problem statement was crystal clear, and it was useful that you mentioned you suffered from this. I think on the hypothesis one, this was excellent, like 22 interviews, great work. Statements were very simple and clear. Uh, I liked to you talk through the process again, particularly with the visuals, right? It's like, you know, each one was different when you talked about the interviews, but you were seeing trends emerge. You're explaining like, why were you doing all this stuff? Right? Lots of people, when they do the case studies, just list. I did interviews and then I moved on to an MBA. I said, well, why, why did you do all of that? Uh, hypothesis two was good. Again, you talked to, why are we doing this stuff? Just a simple landing page to validate what we were working on. Results, excellent. I mean, best I've ever seen. Uh, and good, you phrased it as strong conversion because otherwise you just write, you know, 57%. Like, what does that mean? Is it good? Is that bad? It's so good. You're always contextualizing everything. Um, criticism again was the MVO. I think this was the chance to go into like, what is the MVO? Ultimately, it's a way of validating a strategy right? and, and val where value lies before committing to a solution. If you're thinking of, you know, coming in as a product leader, people want you to save money and make money. And you're showing, mm -hmm. hey, we're not going to spend a year developing these features that we don't need or this product we don't need. A small thing, but I think again, just talking it through. Vision was excellent, very simple, and loved as well. You really internalized the point, which I think is so important. You don't need to reinvent the wheel with most cases, right? Your USP is simple questions and simple options. Simple as that. You don't need to make it super complex. I love that. Hypothesis three, good flow into this throughout. Generally, everything flowed very well. I like the points you stated uh, on the right about, you know, what are things that are important, using clear, positive language, for example. Good, you referred to TurboTax as a parallel as well. It reinforces your argument quite effectively. 
And you explained like what it is for non-Americans, really, really good, really self-aware and thoughtful. Hypothesis four, good learnings around the output page and you, you double down on the value proposition, right? So keep simplifying the questions, excellent. Very few leaders do this, right? I forget to do it at times. Like, what do we do really well? In our case, it's hands-on experiential learning. Keep doing more of that. You don't need to add lots of new, exciting, novel features. PMF, uh, good, I think, advice there is, yeah, carve out time. Every, every cohort, every test you do to compare the feedback, sorry, review the feedback and compare it to previous cohorts. And um, I think on the retro, really important personal thing that I'll do every Sunday evening, review like what went well during the week, what could I improve upon? Really, really important if you're, you're not only working for yourself, but also just as a leader, and as a leadership practice. Sorry, there's a motorbike in the background. No um, just final points. So I think generally over the eight weeks, it's just excellent work. Right? I think first you just you came across a great problem, strongest problem out of the 20 on the cohort. Okay. But also you match that with hard work, right? So a lot of, I'll try my video again. Uh, you know, great prototyping. You were really thinking things through from first principles. It's like, what makes sense in my context? You know, you didn't just jump, so I'm gonna build this complex app. You're like, you know, would I do a call first? Then the bubble form, right? Figma, these kinds of things. You really thought through and understood, like, why are we doing all this stuff? That came through in the process, that came through in the case study as well. Uh, I think final two points, uh, other one relates that you push right through to the end, right? You went for the prototype, you did the product market fit engine. That is why that's going to separate you from product manager, product leader, right? You're putting the work in and, and really getting the learning, maximizing the learning. I think final point, um, you know, throughout as well, excellent communication. I think it's a real strength of yours that you never use complicated language. Points are crystal clear. Um, and I think actually, you know, only advice I give on that, I think is the stack up product managers, it's simple things, right? Like, you know, lighting we're talking about, uh, you know, wearing a shirt, having, you know, having a, a good camera, good micro, these small things, but in a remote context, right? As a leader, people are looking up to you always. You need to yeah. hold yourself to a really high standard on even, you know, things that don't really matter, right? Like wearing a shirt at home. What's the point of that? I think these are small things that just help, you know, yeah things mindset shift in a way um, oh, no, i think it's freezing again yeah. okay. oh, you're back okay sorry sorry my internet today um small things like that you know these are these things that no do worries it... so they think that... that do help as as a leader um but anyway it's a, yeah really 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 happy with that case study really rewarding to see it as well i think really you know excited to see where you go with this so um Let's let's stay in touch the next few weeks and see where we go. Yeah, absolutely.